Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Auto. So here, obviously, we have a Nissan ENV 200 electric van. This is a 2016 with a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack, and it is an Ascenta Rapid Plus. And the Rapid means it's got DC rapid charging up front, and it's the Plus means it's got the upgraded 6.6 .6 kilowatt AC charger. And this van has also got the winter pack, and what that is is heated seats. Both seats are heated, and the center switch here is the heated steering wheel so we've got a leather heated steering wheel and that's really nice in the winter and it's a lot more efficient to heat your contact points or you heat your bum and heat your fingers and heat your hands than trying to heat the whole cabin because that uses huge amounts of energy however this also has preconditioning so you set a time on the van what time you want to leave in the morning and while it's connected to your charger overnight it will switch on and get the van ready for that time and um, it will heat the cabin up if it's particularly cold it will melt all the ice off the windows and uh, defrost it obviously and then when you disconnect you've still got 100% range 100% of your battery and your cabin's already warm and from that point you can probably do your drive without the heating on but that's where the winter pack becomes really useful because you can then just uh, use your heated seat and heated steering wheel and that genuinely does keep you warm, it works very well and that's much more efficient than continuing to use the, um, the cabin heater. And with this van we've got two charge cables, there's your AC charge cable type 1 to type 2 that you would use to plug into a wall charger or a public 7 kilowatt charging post and this is the portable charger often called a granny cable and that allows you to charge the vehicle on a normal main socket it does take longer because these can only draw um, 10 amp it reduces the charging down to only 10 amp so it doesn't make your home wiring a bit hot whereas if you use a proper wall charger you're going to draw uh, 30 amp so the purpose of these videos is to show the condition and if you see my videos before you know I point out every little stone chip mark or scratch, I don't hide anything, there's no point. And that gives people the confidence to buy it from afar without coming to view the vehicle. And then I get the vehicle delivered to you and it will come to you on a trailer or a, a flatbed and it will be fully charged and ready to use. So not much to show you on this one, I've had this vehicle in before, I did sell it um, about uh, seven, eight months ago or so and I've just taken it back into part exchange so this is the second time I've had the vehicle there's a few little things I'm going to point out but it's all quite uh, minor so let's start on this side there's a few scratches to the wheel trims um, I would just say everything I'm going to show you I've taken pictures of so if you look at the photo gallery on the website you can zoom into the pictures and have a really good look in detail there's a couple of uh, little scratches on the van where um, I should think previous sign writing was removed, you know, vinyl writing. There's a, a scratch there about one centimetre. It has got a bit of uh, paint, touch-up painting from last time. Um, possibly, is that a scratch? Yeah, there's a little scratch there. There's a couple of bits where actually little bits of glue are still on there. Um, but yeah, that scratch there, um, there's a tiny little scratch there, but I'm being too picky now. Um, there's a bit there, there's a two centimetre scratch there, again it's got a bit of paint from last time that was in. Uh, no dents along this side or any significant scratches, this is all very minor. There's a bit of um, uh, scratching here on the plastic wheel trim, but it's just a plastic wheel trim, there's a little hole punctured there, it's just where they hit the kerbs, um, but most people tend to uh, take the wheel trims off anyway. Um, looking around here it's all good at the front there's just one thing I need to point out and there is a mark here on the charge flap but this is just plastic something has clearly hit the front you know a stone um, there's a tiny little chip on the edge of the badge and then a, um, a one centimeter mark here in the paintwork it's got some white paint on from before but it has uh, got a little bit dirty so it does show up a bit um, but you know it's pretty insignificant really it is a van at the end of the day the front is all really tidy there's one little mark I need to point out down here it has got a little bit of abrasion here but it's very small you know it's the size of my nail um, just here and a tiny bit of uh, abrasion along the edge there but really really insignificant uh, a bit of curbing on that um, wheel trim as well looking down here um, I think there's a I don't think there was anything to point out I was just saying I think there was a dent yes there is a dent that's why I, I knew there was something on this side little dent there there's a tiny bit of 
uh, touch up paint there where the paint was cracked again that was last time it's just a few millimeters and then some minor scratching to that wheel trim um, I don't know whether I said but the tire tread depth will be on the website and then looking around the back it's all rather nice uh, the bumpers in good condition uh, there is a tiny little scratch there size of my fingernail there's a pinprick dent here somewhere there uh, but I'm struggling to see it in this light but again very minor the most significant dent or mark as it were on the negative on the bodywork is there is a dent here on this pillar um, and uh, you can see it in this light because we've got brilliant sunshine but a lot of lights you don't even notice that but um, if you want to that could probably be pulled out with a um, one of these paintless dent guys but you know that that's as bad as it gets on this van if you look on the inside it's all ply lined it's in pretty good condition it's obviously being used but we've got the full height ply on the sides we've got our two charge cables there is a set of um, uh, cheap not OEM uh, rubber mats there that you can put over the carpet mats in the front um, yeah and it's all pretty good you, usually this is a bit of a dirt trap um, but yeah, it's all, it's all pretty good full height ply on the back. Just this ply has a tiny puncture mark there and a few marks down here. Could do with another screw holding that in there. Um, but yeah, for a van of this age, it's all in pretty reasonable condition in the back. And then looking on the inside, it's all really nice. Usually these um, EMV 200s have quite significant uh, seat wear. Uh, a lot more than any other vans and that is because of the height of these seats if it was a, a larger van like a, a transit or varo or something like that you would actually use the step and step up into the vehicle um, and if it was a lower van like a kango or a partner you again step up and lift your bum up as you step up out of the vehicle but these env 200s they're set um, the seat height is set at such that you um, neither lift up or um, step up and you consequently slide your bum across this bolster every time you get in and out and they generally get significant wear on this bolster you know I've seen uh, many of these vans at 30,000 miles this is completely worn out and the sponge is sticking out and they look a mess um, so the fabric on this is still uh, doesn't show anywhere it's still really nice as it is up here um, but you can feel the foam in this bolster has started to um, wear a bit inside uh, but it's all exactly what you would expect it is a low mileage vehicle but it still has been used um, you know almost every day and it's still got your normal sort of wear and tear that any second-hand van would have but this is much much better than uh, the majority of these there is a bit of wear down there where the, the um, paint has been worn off the sill again that's because of the sliding in and out uh, and completely normal on these ENV 200s the only other things to point out on the inside there was something mounted here on the dash so it's got a plastic bung in a hole there um, leather steering wheel as we said so that's a really nice thing all very clean and tidy in here the seats and uh, all the plastic work is all scratch free no marks on the seating really nice um, the only other thing I just need to point out is it's missing this little plastic bung which goes in the shift lock um, hole here and what that is is obviously at some time it had gone flat and had been recovered and you have to flick that out to release the gear stick to put it into neutral and someone's uh, lost it um, and Nissan don't sell that which is a shame but it's only a little plastic bung not too dissimilar to that actually um, so yeah the rest of it's very nice and if I just jump in and start it up um, we've got uh, CD radio and it's also got Bluetooth as well we've got climate control with preconditioning as I said we've got the heat the winter pack so we've got um, two stage um, seat heaters both sides and the heater steering wheel We've got um, a front audio system where it plays a tone at low speeds to warn pedestrians and cyclists. And um, yeah, so here we can see the charge times. Uh, we've got two charge times, a three and a six kilowatt to show that it's got the upgraded 6.6 .6 kilowatt AC charger. And there's our mileage, 16,445 miles. 
and uh, we can see that it's estimating the range at 88 miles. That does depend on how you drive because it depends on your driving economy and all the information on the range is on the website. But if I just use these buttons down here to scroll through the menus, you can see their recent driving was at 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. There's our battery pack charged to 100%. There's the battery temperature and there's the battery state of health, the battery capacity, and we've got full 12 out of 12 bars. So yeah, um, I think that's all I need to show you on the inside. I'm being really super picky here, but the other thing I'll just point out is there is a little bit of knocking on this support bar. So when you open and shut the door, it's not really knocking, but you can just hear slightly that support bar, find its position. You know, they're grooved to lock the door in certain positions. Um, but yeah, it's all good. The door still lines up exactly as it should do. There's no draw, door drop or wear or anything and still shuts as it should do. It's just, you can hear it um, find its positions in those grooves on that support bar. Let's just look at the charging at the front. So at the front here, we've got two charge ports. So this is our 50 kilowatt Chadamo port, the DC rapid charging port. So this is what you would use on uh, in the motorway networks and uh, they've also got them in petrol stations and things. This is your rapid charging where you would get a charge to 80% in about 30 minutes. And this is your AC charging. So this is what you would use back at base or at home or when you're out and, out and about on site uh, during the day using that portable charger in the back. This is your AC charging and as I said this has got the upgraded 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. As standard they're 3.6 kilowatts so you get slightly faster charging uh, with the upgraded one. But to be honest most of the time people are going to charge these overnight so it doesn't really make any difference whether it takes a few hours longer if it's overnight, who cares, because it's always going to be charged by the morning. But the upgraded chargers are useful if you want to charge throughout the day because they will charge the van that bit quicker. So I think I covered everything. Um, all the other details are on the website if I have missed anything, so do look at that. And this van is ready to go, so if you're interested, give me a call or email. One thing I forgot, I just noticed I'm just reversing the van back into the um, workshop. Uh, when you put it into reverse, I'm not sure whether the microphone's picking this up, but it does have a buzzer on the back, a reversing buzzer. I would also just add we have a reversing camera here as well. Um, so it's easy to remove the reversing buzzer if you don't want it. It's only powered off the um, uh, rear light, the reversing light, and you can soon snip the wires and remove it. However, with these, you have an option to double engage, and now that's turned it off. So you go to reverse and back and reverse again, it does turn off the buzzer and that's an, um, a nighttime thing. So if you're in uh, a built up area and you're reversing at night, you can disengage it yourself manually by doing that.